Most serious crimes have an obvious suspect, but in some crimes, such as serial murders or rapes of strangers, there's no obvious suspect. And this is where the police may bring in a psychological profiler. Offender profiling is simply trying to generate a profile of an unknown perpetrator based on clues or other types of evidence that might be found at the crime scene. So effectively what the profiler is trying to do is work out from the crime scene who the perpetrator might be. Offender profiling is a technique where you can infer an offender's characteristics from the way in which he or she commits a crime. Usually the types of crimes that an, pro an offender profiler would be called in to advise the police would relate to linked series of crimes, uh, especially linked series of crimes in relation to rape and in relation to murder. One of the earliest and most celebrated uses of offender profiling in the UK was the case of the so-called railway rapists in 1986. In 1982, a woman was raped near Hampstead Heath Station. Over 20 more women were attacked in a similar manner at or near stations in the London area over the next three years, leading the media to tag the unknown perpetrator as the railway rapist. Then on the evening of December the 29th, 1985, 19-year-old Alison Day took a train to Hackney Wick Station in London. She was going to meet her boyfriend from work, but she never arrived. Two weeks later, her body was found in the River Lee. The railway rapist had turned murderer. Then in April 1986, schoolgirl Marty Tamboza was raped and murdered near West Horsley. And in May, TV secretary Anne Locke was also raped and murdered on her way home to Brookmans Park Station. Police began to believe that the railway murders and the railway rapes were linked. The links between these two offences were that the hands had been tied, clothing had been cut, and the blood group of the rapist was exactly the same as the murderer. And we then knew that we were looking for a multiple rapist and murderer. With media interest and public concern mounting, and with no obvious suspect, Surrey police brought in environmental psychologist David Cantor to help them. By piecing together circumstantial evidence in a systematic way, two detectives and Professor Cantor started to build a profile of the offender, and it produced a number of insights. People do change, but the changes that happen to them often are part of things going on in their lives. See, from studies that we'd done of other incidents like fires, um, we knew you can build up a picture of a person and, and get some understanding of them without actually meeting them. And we felt that, that probably with material the police had that a psychologist could do something with. Some of the psychological principles that would be used in offender profiling would be related particularly to issues about personality and how personality and behaviour might be displayed within a crime scene. So while specialist crime officers look at crime scenes for physical evidence, Psychological profilers look for information that may suggest something about the offender's personality, his location, or previous history. But as we'll see, there's more than one approach to offender profiling. 